What you might not know is that Nizerol works way better for some than for others. In fact, there are specific scalp conditions that can coincide with hair loss. And if you have these conditions, you can often predict if you'll be a great responder to Nizerol or if you're gonna be wasting money or even worse, making your hair loss worse. We all want an effective, low risk, low maintenance way to fight hair loss. And at first glance, it might look like the shampoo Nizerol fits this definition. A usage frequency of one to four times weekly, no sexual side effects, and clinical studies showing up to a 10% increase in hair counts in both men and women who are trying the shampoo. What you might not know is that Nizerol works way better for some people than for others. In fact, there are specific scalp conditions that can coincide with hair loss. And if you have these conditions, then you can often predict if you're gonna be a great responder to Nizerol or if you're gonna be wasting money. But before we get into these conditions, we first need to understand what Nizerol shampoo is, its formulation, its mechanisms, why a 2% variety matters, and what most people get wrong about using this shampoo. First, Nizerol is the brand name for a shampoo containing ketoconazole. This is an antifungal medication used to treat skin conditions like dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis or even jock itch. And this might make us wonder, what does an antifungal medication have anything to do with hair loss? Well, our scalp has its own microbiome, a collection of yeast and fungi and bacteria. And these microorganisms, they live on our scalp skin and they feed off the debris from our scalp. Generally speaking, the dead skin cells and the sebum which is the oil that our skin produces. In exchange, these bacteria on our scalp, they produce enzymes and they help regulate pathways involving the metabolism of certain proteins and even nutrients related to the hair growth cycle. Think certain B vitamins like biotin. In these cases, microorganisms are actually commensal or good. They're happy eating our cellular debris and we're happy with them on our scalp because they're improving the condition of our health and our hair. Now, Problems can arise when too many microorganisms or the wrong kinds of microorganisms end up on places they shouldn't be. Take Propionibacterium acnes as an example. In low quantities, this type of bacteria, it's not problematic. But in high quantities, this bacteria can colonize our sebaceous ducts, the skin gland section that produces our sebum or skin oil. This gives these bacteria direct access to their food source and as a byproduct of digesting those skin oils, they start to secrete something known as porphyrins. These porphyrins then react with UV radiation from the sun to trigger inflammation. And this inflammation causes our bodies to react by sending more hormones, more proteins, and more sebum to these scalp sites, which ironically only feeds more P. acnes proliferation, and the process and cycle repeats and repeats. In our 2017 paper on pattern hair loss, we described this phenomenon as the microorganism sebum feedback loop. The end result of this feedback loop, a lot of inflammation in the scalp, a lot of dandruff, and potentially even more hair shedding. On that note, several studies have actually found that balding scalps, they tend to have a higher level of these potentially problematic microorganisms. Think P. acnes, think certain Malassezia species. And that these organisms, they're linked to inflammation of our hair shafts, and they're potentially even linked to excessive hair shedding. And while causation versus association is still debated among researchers, it goes without saying that if you're trying to fight hair loss from all perspectives, you probably want to keep these bad bacteria or yeast at bay, which brings us back to Nizerol. Nizerol, or ketoconazole shampoo, is an antifungal medication it damages the cell membrane of a fungus. Specifically, it stops fungi from producing something called ergosterol, which is a compound that regulates a fungi's ability to control its cell membrane. Without ergosterol, this membrane erodes, the cell contents from inside the fungi leak out, and eventually the fungus just dies altogether. And it's not just fungi that Nizerol targets. In fact, it can also target and inhibit enzyme used for bacterial reproduction, which allow it to act as a broad spectrum antimicrobial and thereby have some anti-inflammatory properties. And this is exactly how ketoconazole can improve conditions like dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis. In cases where these skin conditions are driven by microorganism activity, 
ketoconazole actually kills off those overgrowths and thereby improves the inflammation, which is causing the condition. So you see an overall improvement. Now, given that between 30% and 50% of men who are balding have these microorganism overgrowths in their scalp skin, and given the relationship between inflammation and hair shedding and the miniaturization process that accompanies pattern baldness, how does ketoconazole shampoo hold up as an effective hair loss intervention? Well, not terribly. Let's look at some of the evidence. In this study, 2% ketoconazole shampoo was tested in balding and non-balding men, and then compared against a normal shampoo. Over a 21-month period, ketoconazole use led to improvements in both hair counts and hair diameters in the balding group, while the normal shampoo led to continued hair loss. In this small study that lasted six months and was on women, 2% ketoconazole shampoo was just as effective as 2% minoxidil, and interestingly, once again, ketoconazole shampoo led to an increase in hair diameters. This is particularly interesting because in pattern hair loss or androgenic alopecia, hair diameter reductions, well, they're believed to be caused by the hormone DHT. So improvements here have led some researchers to speculate that ketoconazole shampoo, it might actually help lower DHT levels as well in the scalp and without disrupting hormones elsewhere in the body. This is still debated and we'll explain why in a later video, but it was worth mentioning here. In this study, men with both hair shedding disorders and pattern hair loss tested three shampoos, including 1% ketoconazole for six months. All shampoos performed similarly, at least in terms of improving dandruff and reducing hair shedding. However, there were no changes noted in hair density for the 1% ketoconazole shampoo. And we'll get into why this was the case later in this video. And in these two studies, ketoconazole shampoo was tested as part of a combination therapy for pattern hair loss. In both cases, researchers found that this shampoo worked well, especially as an adjunct therapy alongside finasteride or minoxidil, but that it worked particularly well in men who were losing their hair who also had atopic or seboric dermatitis. Now, all of these studies had relatively low dropout rates, and aside from some scalp itching and some skin dryness and roughly one to 7% of people trying the shampoo, no serious side effects were reported. And that's an excellent safety profile when we think about things. And to me, this puts ketoconazole shampoo into that category of a low cost, low effort tool that we can use in our fight against pattern hair loss. So say we're going to start using Nizorol, well, what else do we need to know? There are a few things that are pretty important. First, get the right formulation. In clinical studies, only the 2% ketoconazole shampoo was shown to improve hair counts and hair density. Unfortunately, 2% ketoconazole also requires a prescription from a doctor, at least in most countries. And for most of us, the Nizorol that we see in our local drugstores, that's not the 2% variety. Rather, that's the 1% variety, which is not what we want. I mean, just reflect back to those earlier studies. The 1% did nothing for hair diameter. So if you wanna try ketoconazole for hair regrowth, do it right and go to your doctor for a 2% prescription. Second, apply as directed. Again, clinical studies show that we need to use this shampoo one to four times weekly, and for each session, we need to let it sit on our scalps for five to 10 minutes so that these antifungal effects can actually take hold. If you're rinsing out your hair seconds after applying this, you're not doing it right, and you shouldn't expect any results. Third, don't quit too early. Studies show that it takes at least three months to see results from ketoconazole and that results might continue to improve up to the 15 month mark. For more information on this, I'd recommend checking out our video on results horizons, which details these time windows for every single hair loss therapy out there. And lastly, you have to understand what makes a great responder to ketoconazole. Keep in mind the main action of Nizorol is its antimicrobial effects. With that said, also keep in mind that only 30% of men who are balding have those overgrowths in their scalp of pathogenic microorganisms, specifically the P. acnes and the Malassezia species that we had mentioned earlier. So this shampoo is going to work way better for those affected by these microorganisms than those who aren't. And on that note, if you have pattern hair loss alongside lots of dandruff, skin flaking, and seboric dermatitis, well, 
these are great signs that you might have a pathogenic microorganism activity overgrowth, which implies that you could be a great candidate for Nizorol, which means you should probably try it. For an example of this, see the transformation of one of our members inside of our membership community, Rabi. He was diagnosed with pattern hair loss, and he also had an inflamed scalp and some digestive issues at the time of his diagnosis. One of the things that we encouraged him to look into was ketoconazole shampoo, given these symptoms. After several months of 2% ketoconazole shampoo use and a variety of antimicrobials employed alongside dietary changes and scalp massages, look at his hair today. Again, this is a significant density improvement. No more redness on the scalp and a decent amount of hair regrowth, especially for a regimen that was devoid of both minoxidil and finasteride. So I'm showing you this example because it goes to show the benefits of this more individualized approach and the power of ketoconazole shampoo when it's used properly. On that note, Say you fit the profile of a great candidate for Nizorol. You've got the pattern hair loss, the scalp inflammation, the dandruff, the dermatitis, the excess sebum production. But then say you actually try 2% ketoconazole shampoo and 15 months later, your symptoms haven't improved at all. Your dandruff remains, your scalp inflammation remains. Well, this is also great body feedback because it tells us that those scalp conditions they might not be driven by microorganisms, but rather potentially by autoimmunity. And to fix autoimmunity, we need a different set of tools, which means a different, more individualized approach. But that's for a later video. In any case, I hope you enjoyed this video on Nizorol shampoo. We'll be back next week with another video. And if you have any comments or questions at all, you can reach out in the comments section below.